the age when I was growing out of Pokemon. It was about 10 years ago and I sold like 300 of my Pokemon cards for a whopping $13. And I'm still bitter about it because one of them was a holographic Charizard, which was really rare and was like the best card you could get. And by itself it could go for $100, but th that's, that's beside the point. The point is, I gave up on Pokemon partly because Nintendo never made the Pokemon game that we Poke fans were begging for. A full-fledged Pokemon adventure in 3D on the Nintendo 64. Pokemon Snap, as Craig mentioned in another vault, was disappointment number one. But failure number two came in the form of Pokemon Stadium. In Pokemon Snap, Nintendo was all like, You can capture Pokemon in 3D! On film! Yeah, what do you freaking do? But at least with Pokemon Stadium, we were promised that we would be able to battle Pokemon. And that's automatically way more interesting than taking pictures, right? Turns out, no it isn't. Nintendo managed to make photography more fun than forcing animals to fight to the death. Because in Pokemon Stadium, fighting to the death is the only thing you do. The game came with this nifty little contraption called the Transfer Pack, which lets you copy your Pokemon from red, blue, or yellow into Pokemon Stadium so that you can battle them with friends or gym leaders. It was really neat for us kids back in the day to see our 2D black and white sprites suddenly come to life in 3D on our TVs. But you could also use it to play your Pokemon games on the big screen, whether you needed to do some last minute training or you just wanted to play Pokemon. But even if you didn't own Pokemon games on the Game Boy, you weren't left out. You had the option to rent any Pokemon of your choosing. But the dude renting them out to you, whoever he is, I want to punch him right square in the nose because he's got this little scam going on. He doesn't give you the Pokemon you ask for. Instead, he just gives you six dittos that shapeshift into the Pokemon you wanted. This is called fraud, kids, and this gets you in prison in real life. My advice to you, though, is not to worry about the battles too much because Pokemon with only fighting and no adventure gets old really, really, really quick. That's why there's also a minigame mode, which, despite the minigames being pretty crappy, is kind of fun to play with friends for the first 10 minutes. But in Japan, this game was actually known as Pokemon Stadium 2 because what was meant to be the first game was apparently worse. There were only 42 Pokemon out of a possible 151. It was insanely difficult, and it was for the Nintendo 64 disk drive. From the start, this game was doomed to fail. Like I said, Pokemon Stadium wasn't what a lot of us thought it was going to be. There's more to Pokemon than just fighting, and mini games don't fill in that gap. But even after all these years, if Nintendo were to step it up and make a Pokemon MMO on the Wii or 3DS, I'd get it day one. Think about the potential of a Pokemon MMO. Seriously, Nintendo, make it happen.